Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary Church as we celebrate the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time and Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. At this time, we invite you to welcome those around you. As we begin our Mass today, we take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds as we reflect on these words from Psalm 27. O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Mass today is offered for, it's a happy birthday for Edward Daniel Windsor, who is living from Mary Beth Windsor. And our celebrant is Father Rob. Our opening song is number 304, Our God is Here. Number 304, please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate this liturgy, we call to mind our sins and God's great compassion and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the face of compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you shepherd your people with tenderness. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us everlasting life.
God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our prayers, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and deeds, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the Israelites came to the desert of Sinai and pitched camp. While Israel was encamped here in front of the mountain, Moses went up the mountain to God. Then the Lord called to him and said, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, Tell the Israelites, You have seen for yourselves how I treated the Egyptians and how I bore you up on eagle wings and brought you here to myself. Therefore, if you hearken to my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my special possession, dearer to me than all other people, though all the earth is mine. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, Christ, while we were still helpless, yet died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us 
in that we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At the sight of the crowds, Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then he summoned the twelve and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and illness. The names of the twelve were these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon from Cana, and Judas Iscariot, who would betray him. Jesus sent out the twelve after instructing them, do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan house. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. The Gospel of the Lord. Every time I hear these scripture readings, something new pops into mind. And just as the first reading was read today, something popped into my mind. And um, it's the line, while Israel was encamped here at the foot of the, at the front of the mountain, Moses went up the mountain. 
Now why did Moses go up the mountain? He somehow was driven to go up that mountain and, and he had to take the initiative. The same thing when he was told to go and call the people of Israel to follow him and Moses does what Yahweh says and goes back and becomes the leader of the Israelites and the one who, in a real sense, through whom God conquers the Egyptians and Pharaoh. Important that, you know, we have to take certain efforts on our own. Granted, they are a bit grace-bound or driven by grace, but we have to follow that grace in order to do and accomplish what the Lord invites us to do. And so it is in the gospel today when we hear all the names of his disciples, um, Simon called Peter, his brother Andrew. There's also a definition in all of them as to where the follower, the apostle is from, like Simon is Peter, his brother, Andrew. It's always relational. All that is relational. Uh, the son of Zebedee, his brother, John, Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon from Cana, and Judas Iscariot. All of those, they're, they're, they're related. There's a relational element to go on in, in all those dynamics. And so it is with us. We are called to relationship with God, each in our own way. Um, Jane the teacher, Mike the doctor, uh, Betty the lawyer, uh, whatever the case might be, we all are to come as who we are and with our gifts and our talents and use them to follow the Lord. And that is how and why we are called and are sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The people are abandoned and troubled, so God sends us and our gifts and our talents out to serve those who need us. Do not go into the pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. They were all the non-Jews. Okay, they were the other people. They were the ones that Mark in his gospel has get in the boat and goes to the other shore. Those were the people on the other shore. They were not the ones called or following Jesus from Israel, but they go and they go into unchartered territories. And that's the interesting part. We are called to go into territories and areas in which and through which we are not comfortable. If we stand solely on what we believe here and now, uh, there is little, if any, spiritual growth or spiritual transformation. They are sent to cure the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse lepers, to drive out demons. For without cost, you have received. Without cost, you are to give. To give who and what we have, to give and who and what we are called to be to other people. That is what mission and ministry is about. So we are nourished by word and by Eucharist to go out and become like unto the twelve. Like unto the twelve. There's a spirituality involved in all that. And that spirituality and that idea of mission goes back really to Genesis and creation itself at its very beginning. In the beginning, 
God created the heavens and the earth. And then in John's Gospel, we hear, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's the real beginning, not just the created aspect that God shows in Genesis, but even prior to creation as we know it. The presence of God was there and abounds. I was going to wait to the announcements, but I think now is the time to do it, to, to see ourselves in and through that eternal creation, that eternal part. Uh, eternal suggests even before creation. So eternal means eternal, and it's something we can never understand. We are called to at least investigate what that kingdom of God is about, that eternal kingdom of God, and that kingdom of God that is everlasting that began with creation. Um, and as you know, there is a spirituality seminar that we run on Tuesday evenings at 7.15. And the book, it's listed in the bulletin, the, well, the title of it for the summer is Summer in the Cosmos. Wow, that's a big place, huh? Summer in the Cosmos. Uh, it's not just the beach, but it's a lot bigger than just the beach. It's resting within the universe. And that's what our summer program is about, to see Jesus as the cosmic Christ, the one who is, who was, and will always be, the cosmic Christ. It's a funny thing, I'll, I'll share this with you briefly. Um, there's an ad going into one of the papers about the book. I think I even, yeah, I did bring it up. Um, the Cosmic Vision of T.R. de Chardin. Um, and in the writing underneath, one of the places, instead of somehow Cosmic Christ, one of the, uh, the S was dropped. So it came out reading the Comic Christ. So hopefully, God has a little sense of humor too. I, I know if we're created, all the emotions that are given to us are from God. Um, even comedy. Good, healthy, clear comedy is from God. Uh, I invite all of us, and myself included, to rest this summer and have this new kingdom of God generate thoughts and ideas to promote our own spirituality, to transform our own spirituality. Again, because if we just stay in a spot we're at, there is no growth. So I invite myself and all of you to consider this strongly and to spend the time growing in a spirituality that invites us from our very beginnings, from the beginning of time, invites us to be people who are sent on mission and to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to proclaim this cosmic, comic Christ. And let us stand, and in one voice we proclaim, I believe in one God.
and we place our prayers and petitions before our Father. For the church, that the seed of faith planted in the heart of each believer may grow into a bountiful manifestation of God's reign in the world, we pray to the Lord. For our world leaders, that they may work together to create a just and peaceful society for all God's people, we pray to the Lord. For a spirit of evangelization, that we may scatter God's word through daily activities and conversations so that many may encounter Christ today, we pray to the Lord. For all fathers and those who have shown us a father's love, that God will grant them good health, guide them in being good examples, and help them to be a source of encouragement to their children, we pray to the Lord. For our graduates, that they recognize the grace of God in their lives and will continue to use their gifts and love to build up the people of God, we pray to the Lord. For all who struggle, are sick or in need, that they may be renewed by the grace of the word made flesh and may have their health and joy restored. And that all who have died, especially Art Carasoni, Matthew Manzo, Claire Ettore, will be welcomed into the eternal home of God. We pray to the Lord. We pray also for Edward Daniel Windsor living, uh, and we wish him a happy birthday. We, whom we remember in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord that through devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and Immaculate Heart of Mary, many may discern a vocation to the priesthood, diaconate, or religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord That the Lord will hear and answer the prayers found in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord Father, you hear the prayers of all your people in and through Christ, our brother and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our operatory song is number 387, The Summons. Number 387. Be the same. 
My sisters and brothers, pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provides for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food, and renewing us in your sacraments, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give praise and thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with a living faith, and his coming in glory we await with an unwavering hope. And so now, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. the very fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your spirit upon them, so they become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who before he was given up to a death he freely accepted, took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you. Therefore, now, as we celebrate the memorial of his redemption of us through his life, death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy, and your entire people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In union now with all of creation, together we pray, Our Father, Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your love and mercy, we may be always free of sin and safe from all distress as we await with blessed hope the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord be with each one of you always. And we may share with each other a sign of God's God. Behold the one who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed is the one who will feast forever at the supper of the Lamb.
Our communion song is number 328, Ubi Caritas. Number 328.
as this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. We ask the fathers to please, while everybody else sits down, please, except the fathers, because we have a Father's Day blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you created all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and their daughters, may honor them always with the spirit of profound respect. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few quick announcements. Please see the bulletin regarding information on our parish feast next Sunday in the Summer Academy a week from tomorrow, as well as other summer entertainment opportunities and spirituality opportunities, basically the comic Christ. Monday evening, June 19th at 6, we will host a CPR class here at the parish. Please contact us to sign up. It is not too late to sign your children up for Families of Faith Summer Academy. Please see the website and link to registration. Father Valentine has been appointed Administrative Good Shepherd in Irvington. Uh, we will gather with him at the 5 o'clock Mass, as he says the uh, Mass in celebration, and we also in celebration of his ministry here at Immaculate Heart. You are invited to join us to thank him for his ministry here, and it will be again the Mass next Saturday evening with uh, hors d'oeuvres and wine. I don't know what's being planned. <laughs> but you know, a lot of other people talk about stuff that they don't know anything about anyway. So I guess I can do that too. The Lord be with you. Amen. Now, may all of you be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we go in peace to serve and love the Lord. Have a great week, and happy Father's Day, gentlemen, and future fathers. Our recessional song is number 515, Faith of Our Fathers, number 515. from God we all shall then